invisible. You've been on the road for several days. Your money won't last forever. You'll need to put down roots and get a job. But first, you're on a search for the best place in the U.S. to live a life of anonymity. This is a process of elimination. First, you're going to avoid metropolises because of their heavy surveillance. And you'll stand out too much in smaller towns. Mid-sized cities are your best bet. You narrow them down based on access to jobs, transportation, and hospitals. Avoiding places with friends and family. You also avoid cold weather climbs, which are harder to get around in. You home in on one that seems just right. Entering your adopted hometown, it's time to slip into your alter identity. Remember, your old identity leaves you vulnerable to being traced and tracked. So you're going to legally change your name. First of all, don't even think about taking on someone else's identity or social security number. It's not only illegal, but you can inherit that person's debts or criminal record. A safer approach is to petition the courts to change your name, preferably a common one. If there are two million people in the country who share your name, you're suddenly harder to find. All transactions from now on will be under your new identity. And you used your new ID to secure this new residence. But be careful, just because you have a new driver's license doesn't mean you're any better protected from invasions of privacy. Here's the weird part. Anyone can read your license without actually seeing it. How? Most driver's licenses contain RFID chips. That means all your vitals can be read by anyone with a portable ID scanner, which are easy to acquire. Just ask any nightclub bouncer scanning licenses for underage drinkers. Protect yourself against this. What you can do is you can improvise and make an RFID blocking wallet. You do that with aluminum foil. You fold it so that it can fit inside of the wallet easily. And then you're going to take the ID. You're going to place it inside of the wallet because it has to have a barrier between you and the signal. Now, when radio waves try to extract information from your ID, they get rebuffed by the metal. Passports are also embedded with RFID receptors. Now, if you're going to be taking this with you, just like your driver's license, it's going to have to be blocked. And look what we've got. Passport fricassee. With your new identification, your old self is officially hiding in plain sight. But you can't let down your guard. There's an enemy lurking, waiting to expose you. Yourself. I'm Aton Edwards, an expert in the fields of emergency preparedness and safeguarding your privacy. Every day our movements are tracked, traced, watched and recorded. But you don't have to play that game. You're on a mission to reclaim your privacy. When you're trying to stay under the radar, you may feel most vulnerable out in public. But it's in the shelter of your own home where your identity is most at risk. As you get situated in your new residence and back on the grid of modern life, beware of booby traps waiting to expose you. When setting up your computer, it's always best to go with a laptop. First of all, it's portable. And if you have to get up and go, it's a lot quicker. Making sure that you're using a hard wire, wireless, is far too easy to get hacked into. 
If anyone can break the password for your wireless connection, they can monitor your data stream and see whatever you're doing on the web. This is so easy to do that Google did it by accident. They admitted that their roving Street View vans read wireless data from people's houses as they drove around. Even if your data is safe, what if someone were using your laptop to spy on you? It may seem unlikely, but your webcam can be turned on remotely. In February 2010, a school in Pennsylvania was sued by parents who claimed the school was spying on its students at home through webcams on their school-issued laptops. As long as your computer is turned on, somebody could be watching you. So, if your computer has a webcam, you're gonna have to keep it covered. And this is what I call my five cent solution. It's a simple band-aid. And once you have it up there, nobody can see you. Another area of vulnerability, your keypad. Any hacker can install a Trojan virus that can monitor your keystrokes. You'll need to invest in anti-keylogger software. Normally, this is an effective safeguard, but what if there were an even more invasive way that someone can track your computer activity? Forget amateur hackers. No one can touch the tentacles of the National Security Agency, which monitors much of the world's communication. Right now, the government has the ability to search through millions of intercepted messages for pre-programmed keywords taken from random computer activity. It does this through an automated system known as Echelon that can intercept and relay conversations through phone lines or cyberspace. Of course, the NSA claims not to be concerned with monitoring ordinary civilians, but the fact is, it has been accused of illegal wiretapping in the past. In 2002, the agency worked with a phone company to install hardware to monitor customer communications. Odds are, you won't be special enough to warrant this type of attention. But if you're the distrustful type, there is a countermeasure you can take to further ward out prying eyes. Once you are connected, you'll never want to log on directly because your IP address will just give you away. Internet protocol addresses rely on coordinates to establish location on the World Wide Web. They can pinpoint your whereabouts right down to your actual street address. But you can hide your location by using software that reroutes your IP address to a remote server. Anyone who tries to trace you will be led astray. Once again, disinformation. As you leave your house, you find that even a simple trip to the grocery store can be rife with traps. Now remember, whatever your shopping habits were before, you've got a new shopping list now. It goes without saying, you destroyed that old supermarket club card. It records your visits and the products you buy every time you swipe it. But here's something you may not know. Some mass market retailers have started relying on RFID technology to track their merchandise instead of barcodes, which are slower to scan. This shaves countless hours off inventory. More and more stores are experimenting with RFID tracking of their products. Thank, Thank you. you. So those snack foods you buy may look innocent enough, but where there's an RFID chip, there's something that can be tracked. The odds are remote, but if you're really paranoid about your privacy being compromised, then what you'll do is you'll remove the food from the original containers and then pour it inside of Tupperware or plastic bags. Now what this will do is essentially ensure that there are no RFID tags embedded inside of the box. In fact, a good rule of thumb is to get rid of or properly shield any objects that can be activated by radio frequency. Most chips can only be read from close proximity, but advances in science and lower costs are enabling more companies to experiment with battery-powered chips, which can be read from miles away, much like the tech behind vehicle recovery systems. So for total peace of mind, you'll try to live chip-free. Now comes the truest test of your new identity. It's time to get a job, and that's going to mean some sacrifices. To play it safe, you're going to be taking work that's uh, opposite of your career track. 
and you'll be changing jobs every few months. Your first gig is a janitor on the night shift. Night or solitary jobs are the best way to minimize contact with others. Still, entering the workforce, you'll be forced into social situations. Uh, you found everything okay here? Everything is, everything is good, Fine. you know? So what brings you out here to Albuquerque? Be sure you've rehearsed your new identity. Creating a credible backstory is an art form. My, my sister Rhonda's down here. Oh, okay, you know, okay, you got family out here. It's like a dojo I go to. You know, Spies have a saying, always base a lie on the truth. Don't invent a totally new scenario. Draw on your past, changing the details just enough so that they're different to others yet still familiar to you.